today in the kitchen we are making clean out the freezer soup first i'm starting with this is a swiss diamond pan that i'm using right here and it is pretty non-stick it comes from switzerland and i've got a pretty hot pan as you can see when the water bubbles start to dance around you know you've got a hot pot i'm going to start with some onions because i had a bunch of onions that i needed to use up and I'm doing what's called a dry saute. And then I've got white onions and I've got some beautiful red onions. And the more color that you can add to anything, the more phytonutrients you're gonna get. The trick with dry sauteing onions is to keep stirring them. And you can see this is pretty hot. So this is already starting to turn the onions brown. And that's a process called caramelization. And you can add just a little bit of water, just enough to get it to steam, which will help clean up on the bottom the caramelization and pull it off. I'm going to add some celery. And of course, I'm going to add garlic. Because who doesn't love garlic? Oh my gosh, such good, 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 good nutrients, especially for fighting cancer. And I'm just going to add some water. I'm not sure how much water I'm going to add, but we'll see. Depending upon how much vegetables there is, you want to try and add a little bit more water than what you have for vegetables. Next, I'm going to add some carrots that I had in the freezer that I just need to get rid of. This was some slaw. It had some kale in it, some shredded green, red cabbage, broccoli, stalks, kale cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. When it was getting towards the end of its life, I just kind of threw it in the freezer because I wasn't going to use it up. I'm going to throw that in to my pot. And you can see already vibrant colors. Next, I'm going to add some tomato paste. And I like this particular brand because it's in a glass jar. It's organic and it's just tomato. That's it. No salt added. And I mixed it in with a little bit of water just to make it easier. But you could add it directly into the pot. And that tomato paste will add a very nice base. But to add to that, I'm going to add some palmy chopped tomatoes. And again, this is 100% tomatoes. That's it. Then I'm adding some butter beans, which will give it a little bit of protein. And but it also will give that satiation, you know, making you feel a lot fuller because it's going to add a lot of fiber with that protein and it's gonna take time to slow down and digest, so really good addition. And again, I like this brand, it had no salt added. I chose this one because it was sitting on the shelf for the longest, so it was close to expiration, so I'm like, okay, time for you to be used. I had some shelled soybean edamame, it had been in my freezer for a while, so time to get rid of that. I had some frozen green beans in the freezer, so I chopped those up and I had some asparagus in the freezer. Time to use that up. Asparagus is amazing to help alkalize your body. I had some sweet potato that I had to use up because I was going away and they were starting to sprout. So I cooked them up and then put them in the freezer. So now I'm gonna add some of that. And again, that's gonna add a little bit of starch to this. And again, that's gonna give me that satiation. It's gonna make me feel full. The other thing I'm going to add is I found these great flavor packets. This is from Bittersweet Herb Farm and you can find them online and they sell them in packets and in little jars. So the packets are great for you to try out. You can use them for probably two or three recipes and they have a couple recipes on the back that you can of course modify for whole food plant based. And I'm just going to take some and sprinkle it out into my hand because that's how I measure things. And it's, if you dump it straight in, you might add too much and it's hard to take out once you put it in. So this is, I'm just gonna be very generous with these herbs and actually I might as well just use up the bag. Yep, might as well. But you could add any spice blend that you like. If you like a Mexican flavor, you can add that. If you like an Italian flavor, you can add Italian seasonings. Whatever you like that works for you. Now this doesn't need to cook very long because most of this stuff only needs a few minutes to cook. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to it. So after tasting this, I think it's gonna need a little bit of spice, 
My go-to is called Bear Bear. And this is a key ingredient in Ethiopian cuisine. And I just love this. And I used to be able to get this at Whole Foods, but they don't. You know, this is kind of the ending of my amount that I've had stocked piled away. But I'm just gonna give that, you know, a nice add. And you can see how precise I measure things. But I know how much I like, more or less. So over in this pot, I've got, this is called farro. And farro, I cook it very much like pasta. It does have gluten in it. So when you cook it like this, it a lot of the gluten goes into the water. So I will rinse that and drain it out. And I will add some of the farro to my soup, just again, give it to a little bit more satiation and a little bit more rib sticking quality to it. And then I will use some of that to go on my salads to add, again, some grains to my diet. So I've got a nice boil going on this and I'm just gonna let it cook for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I will add a little bit of greens to it. I've got some, some greens that somebody had given me and I stuck in the freezer. So I wanted to use those up. So there we are, that's what we're cooking in the kitchen today.